Good evening and welcome to our first live broadcast of Ask a Funeral Director. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, thank you for joining in with me as we embark on this uh, new adventure on educating the consumer on funeral service and uh, what kind of takes place behind the scenes and um, different tactics that some funeral homes use in their day-to-day um, -day operations and prices. So with this being our first uh, session, I do think it's only appropriate that I introduce myself to you that do not know me, uh, those of you that are not familiar with me, just so you can get a little bit of information about me, myself and where I come from. Uh, I am a, a second generation funeral director. Uh, I've been a licensed funeral director uh, for almost 20 years now, um, but uh, I've been in the business since I was 12 years old. Uh, my dad started his first funeral home in 1953 and uh, grew it to be one of the largest funeral homes in the uh, state of Ohio. Um, that funeral home that I'm referring to that he once owned was the Thompson Hall Jordan Funeral Home out of Cincinnati. Uh, my father passed away January 2nd of 2017. Um, this uh, year in January, the uh, funeral home Thompson Hall Jordan was sold to Spring Grove Cemetery. Uh, with the funeral home being sold and knowing what was coming on uh, down the line, I decided to open up my own funeral home um, last year in 2017, which is called the Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel. Uh, this funeral home is built on the legacy of my father, what he built, and to continue his legacy. Now that Thompson Hall Jordan is no longer owned by anyone in the Jordan family, uh, there is no funeral home. Has, has anything to do with any Jordan, but this one, Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel. Um, with that being said, let me go ahead and put out some disclosures, because uh, I know that uh, what's going to happen is certain funeral homes and owners will see this, um, and then they will uh, threaten me with lawsuits, which has already been done. Um, but let me just go ahead and put this out. This video series is in no way to an attempt to persuade you or an attempt to keep you from going to any funeral home of your choice. I'm not persuading you to come to my funeral home in your time of need. I'm not telling you not to go to any other funeral home in your time of need. You as a consumer, you have the right to use any funeral home that you choose. Um, of course, I would love the opportunity to serve you in your time of need should the need arise. Um, but I am not trying to keep you from going to anywhere you want to go. I'm just here to provide some information to you. All the prices that we're going to talk about today are subject to change, and um, I will be referring to other funeral homes as well as my own funeral homes, general price list. Um, you'll hear the term general price list um, amongst funeral homes all across the country. In 1984, the Federal Trade Commission enacted what's called the funeral rule, uh, that uh, funeral rule guides funeral homes on how they structure their prices. Um, it was enacted in 1984, revised in 1994, and still stands true today. Every funeral home that you go into in this country, they have to provide you with a copy of their general price list or their GPL. They cannot uh, refuse to give it to you. Uh, they cannot request your name. Uh, your phone number, sign any piece of paper, any documentation. If you walk in the front door of any funeral home in this country and you say, I would just like to have a copy of your general price list, they are required by federal law to give it to you. If they do not give it to you, they are violating federal law. Um, if you want to read more on that, you can go online, just uh, search the FTC funeral rule, and you can read all about that. So let's get into it. What do funeral homes actually charge you uh, when you use their services. Um, let's first talk about why the funeral prices are quote unquote so high. Um, just like anything in this world that you do, it costs money to, to die. It costs money to be born. Uh, it costs money to travel on vacation. It costs money to do anything you want to do. It costs money to die. Um, one reason that funeral prices are considered high is because the funeral business is a very expensive business to operate. 
Um, we have a lot of overhead. And when I'm referring to overhead, I'm talking about your facilities that your uh, funeral home is operating out of, uh, your vehicles that uh, you're using, your hearses, your limousines. Just to give you an idea, um, every vehicle that I have, whether it be hearse, limousine, costs me $1,000 a month to lease. Uh, now, you take that and you multiply that amongst multiple vehicles, uh, it's very expensive, not including insurance, uh, maintenance, gas. Um, you also have your uh, personnel expenses. Um, people don't work for free anymore. They want to get paid. Um, so in order to attract quality people, you have to pay them a quality salary. Um, no one wants to come work for minimum wage anymore. Um, everything that we buy, caskets, vaults, flowers, these things all cost money. Now, when um, talking about funeral home prices, you're going to have what are called standard service charges. These are any time you have a traditional service followed by burial, you're going to have a uh, standard service charge. These charges are your basic services of funeral director and staff, embalming, the other preparation of the deceased, which is addressing, consultizing, and casketing, uh, use of facilities and staff for visitation and funeral ceremony, or use of equipment and staff for visitation and funeral ceremony at another facility or church, removal of remains from place of death, and her service to the cemetery. Those are all standard funeral charges. Now, what you pay for them, depending on the cemetery or the funeral home, excuse me, will vary. Now, what I want to start by doing is we're going to talk about one of the larger funeral homes in the area, which is Newcomer Funeral Home. I do have, this is Newcomer's general price list, as well as their casket price list. Now, I must give Newcomer um, their uh, props where it is due. Uh, they do an excellent job of marketing. Um, but if you have seen any of their commercials, they say that they save the consumer thousands of dollars um, on funerals. I'm here to tell you that is a bold-faced lie. They do not save anyone thousands of dollars. It is impossible to save thousands of dollars on a funeral, no matter where you go. If you look at any funeral home in the city where you're in and you compare their prices, just take a handful of them, three, four, five, whatever the case may be, you will find that the only differences in prices may be a couple hundred dollars here and there. It's not going to be thousands upon thousands of dollars. Newcomer advertises a complete funeral ceremony with same day viewing, $2,595, which is their basic service charge. Now, what they don't tell you, which is down here in the very fine, fine print, this does not include the casket. Their minimum casket that newcomer sells is the Batesville Triton Gray, which is $1,615. If you add that $1,615 to the $2,595 service charge, you have $4,100 for casket and services. Now, what happened to the $25.95 uh, that they offered? That's their service charge. They are not telling you any lies about that. They're just telling you it does not include a casket. Now, if you read in the fine print on their commercials, on their website, and all their print material, it does say it does not include a casket. But you have to read the fine print. They put everything else in bold letter, and just like with any other funeral home, you have to read the fine print. Now, if you take into consideration our price list, this is my funeral home's price list, which is on our website. Um, one thing you have to be worried about other funeral homes, I believe outside of myself and newcomer, I don't know of any other funeral home in the markets we serve that openly publish their prices online on their website. Um, this is just my personal opinion. If you are not publishing your prices online, what are you hiding? Um, I have nothing to hide. I am very much open with our prices. Um, if you call, we're, I'll tell you anything you want to know about our prices and how it's structured. Um, but if it's not online and you call a funeral home, they ask for prices and they're re reluctant to give it to you. I just want to know what are they hiding. 
Now, back to what we were just talking about, um, my service charge for our professional services is $3,170. The exact same casket that newcomer sells for $1,615, I sell for $995. Now, is six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Their service charge is $25.95. My service charge is a little higher than theirs, about $600 higher at $31.70. However, my casket charge is $700 less than theirs at $9.95 compared to $16.15. So in the end, it's about a $20 difference once you put it all together. Now, another funeral home I want to talk about in Cincinnati area is Walker Funeral Home. Now, Walker advertised when they first opened 10, 11 years ago, where that was, casket and services for $995. And they've always advertised that they are the cheapest, um, which is, you know, that's okay. Um, my personal opinion is I don't want to be known as the cheapest funeral home. If all you have to stand on is that you're the cheapest, then you have nothing to stand on. I would rather be known for my quality of work and my quality of service provided to the family. That goes a lot further, in my opinion, than just being the cheapest. So that's just my two cents on that. Now, Walker advertises, uh, I believe it's $24.95 uh, for casket and services uh, starting out. Now, what they don't tell you is that service is only available at certain of their funeral homes or certain days of the week. Um, if you go on their website, the first thing you see is a direct cremation at $5.95. On their price list for a direct cremation, it says direct cremation starting at $1,565. Now, my question is, where's the difference? On the website, you advertise $5.95. In your printed uh, price list required by the FTC, it's $1,000 higher. So do they offer a cremation for $5.95? Maybe they do. Uh, no one's going to tell me if I call there because they're going to know why I'm calling. So give them a call and see what they say. If they do, they do. Let me know. Um, I'll be interested in knowing that. But all I can do is go by what's on their federally mandated document, uh, which is $1,595 for a direct cremation. Also, if you look at their service charges, their price list is identical to newcomers. Um, so they have the exact same service charge, the exact same uh, casket charge for the minimum metal casket. So they're at $4,100 for casket and services going by their published uh, price list. Um, now, one thing with the funeral rule, the funeral rule mandates general price lists. It does not mandate what goes on your website. You can put anything you want on your website. I can put on all day long uh, funerals for free until um, you come in the door. Then I hand you my price list and it's, it's not for free. So you can say whatever you want to say online. Uh, there's nothing that mandates that, uh, but you can just... Uh, Get a copy of their general price list of any funeral home and you'll see exactly um, what their true published uh, price is. Now, speaking of the funeral rule, when it comes to funeral bills, you see some funeral homes that will just put on their funeral bill included, 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 depending on what services uh, you are selecting. That is a violation of the funeral rule. The funeral rule states clearly that each item and service that you are purchasing from a funeral home uh, must be itemized out and the price that you're paying for that item must be shown. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind because um, you can call and funeral home gives you one price and you don't know what you're getting um, until you have that itemized out. So when you go to the funeral home, please ask for an itemized bill showing each individual uh, goods and services and their corresponding price. Um, now, I've received a lot of questions um, over 
the last few days and um, on this video, video series. And the top three questions I received that I would like to talk a little bit about. Number one, can a pre-planned funeral arrangement be moved or transferred from one funeral home to the other? Yes, it can. You as a consumer have a right to move your pre-arrangement to whatever funeral home you want to move it to. Um, just because you made it with ABC Funeral Home does not mean you need to stay at that funeral home. You can go to XYZ Funeral Home. It does not cost you anything to move your pre-arrangement. Um, no funeral home wants to lose a pre-arrangement, so they're going to try to discourage you uh, from moving that pre-arrangement when you call them and say you want to move it. Um, it does not cost you a dime to move and they cannot charge you any money. Now, the, the other side to that is, depending on where the money is funded, uh, where they put the money when you paid for your pre-arrangement, uh, they are entitled to keep a small percentage of that money. However, if you are dealing with a funeral home that wants to keep three, five percent of whatever money you put in, just because you're moving your pre-arrangement from their funeral home to another, I would not want to deal with that funeral home in the first place. So if you have any questions on uh, how to move your pre-need, please give me a call. Um, even if you don't want to move it to me or you just have general questions uh, on the uh, process, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. I cannot possibly answer every question during this uh, short time that we have. Um, but uh, give me a call and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. The second question that I received is, can caskets be rented? Um, this most often for when you have a funeral service followed by a cremation. Yes, you can rent caskets. There are caskets that are made specifically for rental use. These are caskets where the interior of the caskets are interchangeable, meaning the entire interior of the casket will come out and then you replace the interior with a brand new interior for the next time you use it. These caskets are designed specifically for a funeral service followed by cremation. Um, some funeral homes will use regular caskets as rental caskets. They just take the person out, put some air freshener in there or whatever they do and put another person in the exact same casket. This is highly unsanitary and it is a violation of the uh, funeral rule. And those types of funeral homes are usually the ones that offer the very low uh, advertised funeral cremation price because they're not purchasing the rental caskets or the rental units. Um, they're just using the same casket 10, 11, 12 times, however long they can use it, and then they'll dispose of it. Thirdly, and this is probably a question that many people have and never have asked it. After my loved one dies and a funeral home has picked up the body, can I change funeral homes at that point? Yes, you can. If your loved one passes away and a funeral home picks up uh, your loved one and you want to move for whatever the case may be, maybe their price is too expensive, maybe, um, they're not talking the way you want them to talk. Maybe they rubbed you the wrong way, whatever the case may be. It is not too late to move your loved one to another funeral home that is going to take care of you. Um, until that person is in the ground or at the crematory, you can still move that person. All it is is a phone call to whatever funeral home uh, you want to use. Let them know where uh, your loved one is and then they can make all the arrangements that need to be made at that time to move your loved one from one funeral home to the next. Now, next week, um, we're going to talk about caskets. Why are caskets so high priced, some of them? Why is there a wide variety of prices? What's the differences in quality? Can I buy a casket from Costco? If so, where does it come from? What's the difference between a casket made in the United States and a casket made in China? Um, we're also going to talk further in depth about rental caskets. I'm going to show you 
an actual rental unit and show you how the inside comes out and new ones go in and what a rental casket is supposed to look like. So my plan is for each Monday of October to do this video series. Uh, we'll do it each Monday at 6 p.m. And it'll, be, it'll go similar to what happened today. We're just going to talk about one uh, specific area of the funeral home and uh, answer any questions that you have. So please uh, continue sending me your questions. You can send them here on Facebook. Um, you can email them to me at donaldjordanmc at gmail.com. Uh, visit our website. You can send through our website at donaldjordanmc.com or give me a call, 513-795-7005 or 937-610-1900. I hope this information has been useful to you and helpful, and I uh, look forward to your comments and feedback. Everyone, please enjoy your day.